Professor Dave here. Let's look at the autonomic nervous system. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. After looking at the central nervous system and certain divisions of the peripheral nervous system, we have a reasonable understanding of how sensory information makes it to the brain, which then tells the body what to do. Like when you touch something hot and then quickly pull your hand away. We also understand how we might decide to execute a particular action, like walking across the room. But there is so much happening in our nervous system that we are not consciously aware of. We don't decide to beat our hearts, it just happens. We don't decide to digest our food, it's automatic. All of this is due to the autonomic nervous system. As we already learned, the peripheral nervous system is divided into the sensory division and motor division. The latter is what produces motion, and this is divided into the somatic nervous system and autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is in turn divided into a sympathetic division and a parasympathetic division. So let's talk a bit more about what this means. First, let's understand that while the somatic nervous system innervates skeletal muscle to generate deliberate motion, the autonomic nervous system innervates smooth muscle and cardiac muscle to generate the involuntary motions we talked about. There are differences in neuronal structure as well. For the somatic, axons are heavily myelinated and singular, releasing acetylcholine. For the autonomic, neurons are lightly myelinated or non-myelinated, and there will be a two-neuron chain from the central nervous system to effector organs. The first of these is the preganglionic neuron with its preganglionic axon and the latter is the postganglionic neuron with its postganglionic axon. And these release either acetylcholine or norepinephrine, resulting in either a stimulatory or inhibitory response, in contrast with somatic, which is always stimulatory. As we said, the autonomic nervous system has two divisions. These divisions actually serve the same parts of the body, but they have opposing roles. The parasympathetic division is for rest and digest actions. It directs the digestion of food and the expulsion of waste, along with other maintenance-related actions that occur best in a state of relaxation. The sympathetic division, on the other hand, springs into action in emergency situations, enacting the fight or flight instincts, raising the heart rate, constricting blood vessels, and releasing more glucose from the liver, all actions that help an organism evade danger. These two systems work together most of the time to keep the body running smoothly, a process called dual innervation. But in specific moments, one may dominate depending on the immediate needs of the organism. To get a bit more specific about the anatomy of these divisions, parasympathetic fibers originate in the brain and sacral region of the spinal cord, which are the opposite ends of the central nervous system, whereas sympathetic fibers originate in between, in the thoracic and lumbar regions of the spinal cord. Parasympathetic has long preganglionic and short postganglionic fibers, with the ganglia residing in the effector organs, while the opposite is true for sympathetic, so the ganglia sit very close to the spinal cord. Here we can see the various nerves of the two divisions and the organs they innervate. The sympathetic division also has some interesting roles. It is responsible for the regulation of sweating, meant to control body temperature. It has an influence on metabolism, as well as kidney activity. And all the activity in the autonomic nervous system is regulated by components of the central nervous system. So with that, we come full circle. Let's quickly review the divisions of the nervous system before moving forward with other systems. The nervous system is divided into the central nervous system, which is the brain and spinal cord, 
and the peripheral nervous system, which is everything else. This is divided into the sensory or afferent division, which is the half that goes from sensory input to the brain, and the motor or efferent division, which goes from the brain to whatever the brain needs to control. This division is comprised of the somatic nervous system, when the conscious mind is involved, and the autonomic nervous system, when activity is automatic. And finally, the autonomic nervous system is split into the sympathetic division, which takes over in times of emergency, and the parasympathetic division, which is in charge of regular maintenance. We have just barely scratched the surface on the complexity of the nervous system, and we will continue to refer back to it in order to build upon our knowledge as necessary while we continue to learn about human anatomy. So now, let's move forward and learn about some other systems in the body. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.